Hey guys, this is Kendall from Recording Lounge Podcast. I'm here to talk about a tutorial about how to sidechain effects in Nuendo 3 and Cubase 4, I believe, and older versions of these programs. I did a tutorial about how to do it in Nuendo 4, and uh, that's that program's more equipped now to do sidechaining effects, but for programs that aren't, we have to find a way around it. So the classic example of sidechaining that I'm going to do today is triggering a compressor using a kick drum to turn down the signal of a bass guitar. And why we want to do this is because the bass guitar and the kick share similar frequency range and generally uh, they kind of fight each other a little bit because unless the bassist and drummer are just extremely good together and you know they've been practicing and they play really tight together and the bassist and drummer have the arrangement perfect where they know you know, that, that, that it sounds great, usually you're going to have some trouble with these fighting a little bit, um, at least uh, to the point where sometimes they step on each other, just sometimes. Well, what this does is you're going to be able to turn down the signal of bass guitar using the kick signal, but it won't affect the kick tone at all. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Nuendo 3. All you got to do you're going to start by adding a group channel and you're going to want a quadro channel which is in the more menu you're going to go up to quadro and it's there okay so it's going to add your quadro channel here i'm going to call this trigger and let's color it purple so notice this channel is made up of four inputs you've got your one and two and your three and four and the way the uh, sidechain works is by looking at a signal of 3 and 4 but putting it out of 1 and 2. So I'll get to that in a second. What we're going to want to do is add a compressor onto this track. Now one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that to do sidechaining you need a compressor with a key input that is capable of doing sidechaining also called just the sidechain button or sidechain engage or enable or whatever. Now uh, on my blog recordinglounge.blogspot.com I've posted a link and also on the info of this video I've posted a link to a free plugin that anybody can download for VST it's real simple and that's what I'm going to use today and you don't have to pay anything it's totally free and uh, you can use it to do any side chaining you need to so this, comp this compressor is simply called side chain compressor so here we have our compressor uh, the only way to engage the key input is by turning up the key volume to zero. So that's really important on this compressor. On a lot of these sidechain compressors, there's just a button that says key in, and you click. Um, for this, what I like to do is set up my compressor to about 6 to 1, somewhere around there. Uh, fairly high ratio. Um, and I like to set my attack as fast as it can go. I like to also set my release about there. That's fine. 102 milliseconds is fine. You can adjust the knee as you wish. Maybe around here might be fine. Uh, the threshold is something we'll have to play with in a little bit. Now, what we want to do is send our bass guitar to it. But what we want to actually do is route it to it instead of just send. Um, so we're going to go up to our routing. Rather than sending to the master, we're going to go straight into the trigger track. So notice this panner here. We want it to be exactly center. We want this base to be right in the front center. Notice front and center. Now we could move it to the rear, but we don't want that. We want it right front and center. Now, we've got our kick track here. And what we want to do is open up this and send our kick track to the trigger at zero. Prefader. And we want to go up here to send routing. Now we're going to open this up, and we want to send this to 3 and 4 of the quadro, because that is what the quadro channel, or the compressor on the quadro channel, is looking for, for its input. So we're going to send it here. Now, if you open up this compressor, notice what it sounds like. Here's the kick. And what we're going to do is uh, watch how much the kick is reducing. And 
and what we really should do is listen to how it sounds with the bass. So now it should be turning down the bass. Let's exaggerate it so you can hear. Notice how the bass guitar is being turned down by the kick drum and uh, we obviously don't want it to sound like that because it doesn't sound too great. So let's, especially for a rock song, we're going to bring it up about here and just listen. I think that sounds pretty good like that. Now listen without it. Now, this song is really kind of unmixed. I've just got a SSL channel, waves, compressor up on the uh, kick drum, and not much EQ on it really, just a gate and a compressor. And uh, I don't have really anything on anything else. And so, um, what we're really looking for is that tight sound and usually you get it around, for me, about 6 to 10 decibels of reduction on the bass. I think that sounds, I think that sounds pretty good about there. Check it in the track and enjoy. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions or comments you can check out the blog at recordinglounge.blogspot.com or you can email me at recordingloungepodcast at gmail.com. Also make sure to check us out on iTunes and subscribe to us. Thank you, guys.